Yes, you do. Day. <laughs> All right, up first, let's go with Mason. Hi, Justin. This is Mason from the Sports Sash Podcast. How are you doing today? What up, what up, what up? As we know, you've not fought in a long time due to the coronavirus pandemic. How have you improved during this layoff? i just been working, man, working on myself uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, and just been growing, man. I can't wait to come out here and uh, whoop some ass. And fa finally from me, you've fought some tough guys in this sport, Curtis Blades, Mark Hunt, just to name a few. Do you think having fought those names is going to give you an advantage in this fight and the fights coming up in the future? I mean, every fight is new. You know, I'm, I'm taking this guy 100% serious, and I can't wait to go out there and see what he got so I can overcome him. Thank you, brother, and I can't wait to see you come first Let's night. get it. Let's get it. Breeze, please. Hey, this is Breeze from the MMA Breeze. I wanted to ask you, how important is it for you to, to win the money in this tournament? Obviously, that's a big draw of PFL. Or are you just looking to make a name for yourself and go in there and just win to win? I'm just coming out here to prove myself right, you know, and dominate these guys. Like I said, I would do. Um, so the money thing is not that big of a deal to me. It's more about going out there and building my legacy. Awesome. Well, good luck, man. Let's get it. Bruno? Hi, Justin. It's Bruno from Jiu-Jitsu Magazine. How are you doing today? What up, Bruno? What's going on? So uh, you've previously fought in the WSOF uh, against Juliano Coutinho, and that was kind of your coming out party into the UFC. Mm -hmm. Now with PFL taking over the WSOF, does this kind of feel like a homecoming to you and a bit refreshing to kind of come back to what brought you on the main stage? I mean, I fought in Japan in the brightest lights. I fought, you know, in UFC in the brightest lights. You know, these are bright lights, so I've been... I mean, this is, it is what it is. It's another, another day in office to me to go in there with my hard hat, punch in the clock, go home to my family. Thank you a lot, Justin. Let's get it, baby. Tanai, please. Hey, Justin, this is Tanai from MMA Island. How's it going, man? What up? MMA, MMA Island was cracking, baby. We're good. How you, um, I wanted to ask you how it's going to be fighting without fans because in the UFC, WSOF, you've always had fans, and this is your first fight since the pandemic. How's it going to be? I mean, this is a glorified sparring match with adrenaline. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you got people around, but, you know, I'm I'm used to, you know, I come from AKA, I come from big gyms. So I'm used to people being around the cage watching me spar. Guys like DC, guys like Kane, guys like, you know, I mean, all kinds of guys, you know. So I'm used to this. Um, and this, it's, it's actually like when I fought in Japan, and you know, there's like 50,000 people in the crowd, but every time you hit them, they're all silent. I mean, they all, they, they go, ooh, but there's no, like, in the UFC crowd, it's really, really crazy because they're just loud and drunk the whole time. You know what I mean? But in Japan, it's very, very silent. So the feeling is kind of surreal. So I think that I've, I've, I've been prepared for this and the most high has prepared me for these type of events. Awesome. That's good to hear. I had one more question, if you don't mind. Uh -huh. um, how do you feel about the tournament system that the PFL has? Showing proof. I mean, it's, it's no politics. It's no, you know, sending the boss gifts. You ain't got to do none of that. All you got to do is win, and the boss can't say nothing. That's great. Thank you, man. Good luck on Thursday. Let's get it, baby. Roz. Hey, Justin. How are you? What up, Roz? What up? This is Raz from MMA, uh, Everton MMA era. So just uh, in relation to this year, I mean, it's been a bit of an uphill battle for all of us. Um, can you elaborate a bit more on your fight camp and kind of the time you spent be before this um, debut in PFL? Well, you know, um, I came from AK and I wanted to, you know, get a fresh look. So, you know, um, one of the things I want to do is, you know, get more personal coaching to really focus on me and my gifts and who I am. So... Um, I did a little search. The COVID thing was perfect for me because I got a chance to do a little search and actually go around and work with different people. And uh, I got a chance to settle in with uh, Rashad Evans as my personal coach. So, I mean, uh, our games are pretty much kind of similar. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going out there to try to dominate and use my athleticism to overcome uh, whatever he has to bring. And um, the, the man did the same thing. So I'm really excited. And I can't wait to go out there and show my improvements. Thanks, man. And just one more. In terms of this year, the 
2021 PFL season. Um, what do you feel um, is your biggest challenge? Is it the tournament system? Is there a specific fighter or, you know, is there anything that you see as, as your main kind of stopping you from getting that million dollar prize? It's COVID. <laughs> okay. Fuck everybody else. You know what I mean? It's just the COVID <laughs> having to deal okay. with the quarantines and, you know, the, the, the test and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like that's the most difficult part. But when it comes to the fighting, I grew up fighting, man. I grew up in, you know, in the system and I grew up fighting. So fighting to me is not really that big of a deal. Um, but it's all the extra stuff and all the extra stuff is what puts um, more stress in the situation. Okay. Cool, but it's a good thing Thank everybody you. has to deal with it. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, but yeah, listen, thank you for that. And yeah, best of luck. Let's get it. Head kick audio. Hey, what's going on, Big Pretty? How you doing? This is Steve. What did it do? Audio. What did it do, man? All right. So after going five and one with the UFC, uh, you know, you had competed with uh, World Series of Fighting previously. Did, uh, you know, coming over to PFL, did it just make sense? I mean, at, at that time, yes, it did. You know, this is two years ago when I made that decision. Um, but, yeah, it still makes sense, and it's a turn, uh, the tournament profile I like. Um, like I said, it's just show and prove. You go out there and show your medal, and um, either you're uh, copper or you're gold, baby, and I'm gold. All right, thanks, boss. Good luck on Thursday. Let's get it. Steve Irvine. Hi, Justin. It's uh, Steve from Steve Irwin MMA. It's been two years since your last bout. Welcome back. Hey, Steve. You said Steve Irwin? Did that guy die? <laughs> Irvin. Oh, Irvin. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no crocodile okay. hunter. Um, so I just wanted to know, so how do you feel mentally going into this fight? You've got a fresh challenge, um, quite different from the past. You've got a million dollar purse at the end if you succeed. If you, succeed. you mind tell me about your mindset going into that with all these prizes at stake? It's just one by one, man. It's just one by one. You know, you knock them down one by one. That's all I can do is focus on the guy in front of me. Then whoever's next, I focus on that guy, so on and so forth. But one by one. No, that's awesome, man. Could I get another quick one in? Did you manage to get any wrestling time with DC in the preparation to this? Uh, I, I worked with Rashad Evans. Thank you very much and good luck. Let's go. Mike Owens, please. Hello, Justin. This is Mike from Mike Owens Media. What's up, Mike Owens? In your opinion, what is the biggest advantage you feel you hold over your upcoming opponent? I'm very athletic, um, explosive, unpredictable. um, And, you know, hopefully he doesn't underestimate me because I have not underestimated him to the least bit. So um, hopefully he actually you know, comes out and he's ready to fight because I'm ready to fight and I'm ready to dominate. Best of luck for Thursday, Justin. Let's get it. Jake Foley, please. <clears throat> hey, what's going on, Justin? Jake Foley from Overtime Heroics here. What up, what up? I'd like to ask, what is your opinion on heavyweights like your opponent that tend to come in lighter at 230 to 235 compared to someone like yourself who comes in at 260 to 265? Pressure, you know, I'm a guy where I'm gonna come in great shape, um, you know, lighter. So he, I think he's depending more on his mobility, but he's never really fought a person like me who is a big mobile guy. Um, and you know, I don't, I'm, I don't get tired. So, you know, um, I put a lot of pressure on him, and my goal is to break him. Period. Thank you so much. Good luck on Thursday. Appreciate it, Sergio. Hi, this is Sergio from Fighter Path MMA. How are you doing? What up, man? So four of your last uh, five bouts went to a decision with the PFL format, and, uh, you know, you get more points for getting finishes. Do you feel any more pressure going in and, and you know, getting getting it done early rather than carrying it over to the third round? Yes, it's, it's the different reward systems. You know, in the UFC, I mean, yeah, you get fight at night bonuses and stuff, but in the UFC, it's about winning, so you're supposed to secure that win. Um, and, and again, this is important over here too to secure the win first and foremost. But um, in this situation, um, if I see a finish, I'm going to go for it. Period. All right. Thank you very much, and best of luck. Thank you, Dylan. Hey there, Justin. How's it going? What up? What up? 
Oh, not much. I'm just kind of curious about your thoughts on your opponent here, Denise Goltsov there. Just, you know, had a pretty good run in general with the PFL season in 2019. I'm curious if you've done specific tape study on those PFL fights, and if so, what your thoughts are on your opponent's stylistic proclivities. I mean, um, he's tall. He's rangy. Um, he has uh, decent mobility. Um, but there's... He just hasn't fought anybody like me, man, period. You know, it's a guy who's going to come forward, um, bang, uh, wrestle. Um, whatever he wants to do, we can do it. So, um, yeah, yes, I have watched the film, but I don't want to give away too many secrets, man. I hate that when people be asking me for all the secrets, man. You know, I can't, I can't tell you the recipe. Oh, yeah, no, just curious what you noticed in his style per se. But, yeah, you don't want to give away the formula. But in yeah. any event, thanks for the time. Yes, sir. Up next, Breeze. Hey, Justin Breeze with the MMA Breeze. I wanted to ask, how instrumental was it for you to work with Rashad Evans for this upcoming matchup, and who else were you working with in preparation? I was working with Rashad, um, uh, Moultrie, uh, uh, Frank, um, Lester, uh, which was one of John Jones' old boxing coaches, um, Greg Hardy was more me and him together, so I got a chance to really see a whole bunch of different looks and being able to uh, really sit back and pay attention and actually soak up some of the game that Rashad Evans has was a blessing, you know, and I feel like it's going to show in this fight. Right on. Looking forward to it. Let's get it. Alex. Hi, Justin. It's Alex from Cape Side Press. Um, I just simply want a prediction from uh, from you. And um, also, I actually um, was wondering if you could um, – uh, if you could give us a, um, I guess, the biggest thing you took from working with Rashad Evans. So prediction first, um, I feel as though I'm going to break him. Um, I don't know what round, I don't like doing all that kind of stuff, but um, I'm going to break this man. Um, and how it was for dealing with Rashad Evans, um, it was a blessing. Again, you know, a guy who has a wealth of experience um, at the top level. You know, I have experience at the top level, but him – you know, again, he, the guy's a Hall of Famer. It is what it is. Uh, and a lot of the parts of his game, um, I feel like were very, very um, closely related to my game. And so I feel like he was able to mix and put together a couple of the pieces of the puzzle. And now I feel like um, I can't wait to go out there and show it. Awesome and good luck. Let's get it. Barcelona. Hey, Jim Barcelona with Miami Herald here in South Florida. What it do? <laughs> Hey, so you mentioned Rashad, you mentioned Greg Hardy. I'm curious, California, such in shutdown mode. Did you come to South Florida to train? You know, um, that's crazy because um, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, at Big Pretty MMA, go follow me. Uh, but um, before all this COVID stuff actually you know, went down, uh, when it was still in China, I was one of the people who said that it's going to come to America and it's going to go to places like New York, California, all the liberal states first. They're going to shut down completely. And uh, boy, was I right. And so uh, about two or three weeks before the shutdown start to begin, uh, began, I actually got out of uh, California. You know, it was a, it was a other, it was, there was a multitude of reasons, but that was one of the main reasons. I went to get my family to a place that I felt was the safest. And so did you come down here to South Florida and train down here? Yes, I'm in, I'm, I am in South Florida now. And lastly, then for me, what has it been like down here, adjusting to down here? You mentioned some of the fighters. Are you over at uh, Sanford MMA? I'm at Hard Knocks. At Hard Knocks 365. Uh -huh. What has that whole experience been like? Because that, I mean, there's so many great training facilities down here in South Florida. Yeah, so I was at ATT for a little bit. I wanted to, you know, you know, uh, experience all the different gyms, you know, kind of like a tryout period. And I just, I settled on um happily settled on hard knocks but yes yeah, a lot of great facilities here but um i want at this point in my career especially entering my prime i want to make sure that i get what's best for me now hey all the best thank you thank you michael morales hey how are you what up uh i'm just i'm just curious like you were in the middle of pandemic justin which obstacles you've faced so far preparing for your pfl debut I mean, gyms being closed down, um, shoot, the PFL being closed down for a year, you know, you know, kind of 
trying to figure out, you know, how to make ends meet. Um, you know, there's been a whole bunch of obstacles that, you know, but I'm just happy that I'm here now and I'm able to perform. And my last question, uh, your last fight was two years ago. How uh -huh. easy or complicated it has been to put yourself back on track physically and mentally for your PFL debut? I've been fighting since I've been a little boy, man. So fighting is something that just, just a switch. Some people have it, some people don't. Perfect, man. Thank you and good luck on Thursday. Thank you. Last question for Dan, Daniel, Bakley. You're on mute, brother, or I can't hear you at least. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Good. This is Dan from Cage by IQ. In your eyes, what makes you the favorite to win this year's tournament? In my eyes? I mean, I'm going to come out here and just dominate, man. I'm going to be me. I'm going to do me. I'm going to work hard. And um, I'll make sure these guys put on their hard hat when they fight me. That's it. Uh, And then the uh, second question, uh, during the layoff, what have you improved on most to get yourself ready for the tournament? Mind, body, and spirit, baby. The whole gamut. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much, Justin. Appreciate it. See you Thursday. Yep, yep.